In this video, let us discuss how to identify the severity of an acute drop in the level of consciousness and stratify using the AVPO scale in OPD or emergency settings. An acute drop in the level of consciousness can occur due to early cerebral hypoxia or hyperperfusion in children presenting with apparently minor symptoms such as fever, focus of infection, diarrhea or breathlessness. Since the Glasgow Coma Scale which is widely used in the intensive care unit settings cannot be used in the outpatient department or emergency room, the AVPO scale is employed to score the drop in the level of consciousness. The score is A, alert, B, responsive to voice, P, responsive to pain or U, unresponsive. A decreased level of consciousness is defined as a drop from alert to responsive to voice, pain or unresponsive. But how do we discern or differentiate between responsive to voice and alert in the pre-communicative infant? Tap on mom's intuition to identify early subtle drop in the level of consciousness. Responsive to voice. Infants do not reliably obey commands since language is not sufficiently developed. Triage process employs lethargy, incessant cry not as usual or excessive sleepiness that is line history to rapidly identify and triage children with hypoxia or shock. So how do we differentiate whether crying is normal or inconsolable? Since crying could be precipitated by multiple reasons. Anxiety stranger distress, need for cuddling, wet nappy, teething, thirst, hunger, etc. So when you hear crying in the outpatient department, send somebody to check with a parent. Avoid thinking that a crying infant is normal. If the parent or mother reports that whatever she does, this infant is crying, consider this as a red flag sign. Triage as seriously ill and evaluate at the earliest. If on the contrary, a child with fever, focus of infection, diarrhea or breathlessness is sleeping in a noisy OPD, this too could be dangerous. Triage and perform the modified rapid cardiopulmonary cerebral assessment to check for hypoxia or shock. In summary, if mom reports line history and the tone and posture look normal, interpret this as responsive to voice. If the child is unable to maintain normal tone and posture, consider responsive to pain. But how do you recognize responsive to pain? Children under 9 months cannot consistently localize a painful stimulus. Hence a drop in the mental status associated with altered tone and posture is defined as pain responsive or P. Acute onset or failure to recognize mom or dad, posturing, flexor or extensor stiffening, upward gaze, sudden hypotonia or squirming movements in children presenting with diarrhea, fever, focus of infection or breathlessness is characteristic of pain responsive. Older children who are unable to walk without support are being carried into the outpatient department or who lie quietly in a hospital bed when parents are out of sight, fighting the oxygen mask, agitation, combativeness, abusive language or desperately asking for water is a pre-terminal drop in the level of consciousness should be considered to have a mental status that has dropped to pain responsive. Unresponsiveness is often mistaken for sleeping. A child with decreased level of consciousness who is having generalized tonic-clonic seizure activity or whose posturing, extensor or flexor posturing is documented or scored as U unresponsive. In summary, if the mom reports that her child is lethargic or having incessant cry or is not as usual or having excessive sleepiness, that is line history is positive, the mental status is scored as V, responsive to voice. In such a child, if you note that the child is floppy, not able to walk, not able to sit by himself, consider it to be pain responsive. If the child is frankly having generalized tonic-clonic seizure activity or is posturing, consider that the level of consciousness has dropped to unresponsive. Now it is important to identify the baby when he is in the V status. 
Often, when parents report that their child is not as usual, the doctor might feel that this child looks alert. Remember, the mother is always right, because when we note that the level of consciousness has dropped to V, if this condition lasts for more than six hours, literature reports that there's a risk of 40% increase in mortality. So it's very important that we identify the child's drop in the level of consciousness at V or P rather than wait for it to drop to U.